Good morning once again. It's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. And I'm taking Jimmy DeResta's advice here when he says make something every day. So today's project will be actually a foundry pattern such that I can make a little anvil, something like this. And uh, this will be a two-part video. The first one uh, talking about pattern making and then the second one actually casting and finishing off this little anvil. So let's begin, shall we? When I was a beginning teacher and in my prime, I'm the one that set up the foundry at the high school. There was none there prior to my uh, tenure, but I needed patterns and I needed ideas and all of that. And I didn't realize it then, but of course I was already teaching uh, buggy whip making back in 67. But somehow or another I acquired a pattern for a little aluminum paperweight. We made some of these out of lead too. Now a man by the name of uh, Steve Page sent me this a couple of years ago. That's his version. He's even got his name on it. I'm going to vary from this just a little bit, but that's about the size that I made at the high school. And this was a split pattern, and it was something fairly easy that the freshman could make. Every uh, young boy made one of these, and uh, of course he had to cast it, and then file it, and he used, learned how to use a vise and a saw, hand hacksaw, and files, and emery cloth, and all of that. Uh, stuff that is long outmoded. A month ago I was vacationing in northern Wisconsin in the Eagle River area. My buddy Dwight, who I've talked about in many of my videos, lets me use his cabin up there and I'm so thankful for that because sometimes I have to get away from YouTube because I am too driven on it. I can't get any rest around here. But on one of the shelves there when I was eating my toast in the morning, I saw this little anvil, and this is one that he made when he was at LP High School as a freshman in my dad's metalworking class. And he still got that thing. Looks a little crude, but that's what gave me the idea for this project and this video. So there it is. I took these pictures out on the deck. I didn't have my video camera with me because I wanted to get away from all of that while I was on vacation but I am usually tormented by ideas and thoughts and have an awful lot of trouble getting peace of mind and rest. Years ago in all of the catalogs that came to shop teachers they sold things like this, uh, little uh, patterns and, and so on so that the teacher didn't have to do everything because in the first year of teaching there's just an awful lot to do. So I think I bought that little split pattern made of polyester for a few bucks and then from that I made a working pattern and some extras because uh, the kids would lose things or seal things or destroy things so uh, I, I made these split patterns. I always kept a couple locked up so that I uh, if, if it disappeared I, I uh, could go ahead with my plans for that school day and the kids had something to do. So I decided I'm going to go ahead with this project well, I was in Wisconsin, I was thinking about that. But, you know, it's one heck of a job to make a wooden pattern, let's say, that looks like this, a split pattern, a two-piece pattern. It's very irregular. It's almost all hand work. And I think you can imagine, if you're a woodworker, how much time this takes. And I'm really not interested in spending that kind of time because this is a video also that will fall on a lot of deaf ears. There won't be a lot of people or a lot of interest in this video because those of you that are out there that uh, do not make castings and this video is strictly for entertainment purposes. I don't expect anybody to actually do this. I decided to base this shape and, and style of anvil off of this one. This is a seven pounder that I keep on the bench. I just love this. Actually I got two of them. And one outside and one here. And uh, of course it's just cast iron. I don't believe it's cast steel but it's, I love the proportions and the shape of this. So however am I going to translate this into wood? Well I'm not. I called upon my buddy Ted who is a cheese head and don't hold that against him. I'm going to show you a picture of him in a minute. 
And then what I do is I make a video, and uh, he's always willing to help me. He's a retired dentist, so he's a wealthy man. <laughs> or he tells me he's not. Uh, he's a good guy. So anyway, I make a video telling him what I'm going to do, kind of like what I'm telling you right now. Maybe I'll make those videos available down in the description. You can look at those for what they're worth. I'll just put the link down there. That'll be a temporary thing because actually that was a that was meant only for him. It's not uh, a polished it's not a polished video like this with great editing. It's just clips. So is this. But don't you like that shape as well? Now this is my buddy Ted from Wisconsin, the dentist, and he had been quite helpful to me. This is when I met him at Arnfest a few years ago. And he's really good at modeling these 3D items for me. This is just a screenshot of my computer. I know it's not very good, but this is to give you an idea of how I uh, got the pattern shape to Ted. Again, look at the, the video that I have a link for down in the description. Pretty crude. Then I emailed it to him. Now this pattern appears on Thingiverse. So you can go to Thingiverse and do a search either for Anvil Aluminum Pattern or for Ted Sikora and then you will find these uh, links. And this is what you will find on Thingiverse and then you can download these but of course you have to have a 3D printer. And this is what it looks like in Cura, which is the slicing program, and you can make it larger, smaller, just about anything you want. This is, let's see, the scale is 50% of what he sent me, but you can easily make it, let's say, 70% larger, or you can shrink her down to 35%, let's say. Take a gander at it, and there's a right and a left. He calls it a top and a bottom, and you need to print out both, but pretty snazzy. That's all I will show with that. And then that goes directly to your printer. Okay, I'm back in the shop, and here is a few samples. I made them in different sizes. In this case, the filament broke. So it didn't quite finish and also it lifted off of the platen so you know that's junk but it serves to show you what the finish looks like and the finish is never all that great at least on my printer and the material of course is PLA. Because the finish isn't very good I also experimented using body putty and the uh, everyone's favorite Durham a rock hard water putty which sands a lot easier than what does the Bondo but that makes it real smooth I know the pattern looks like heck but it makes it real smooth compared to just uh, the printed out finish but this is not one I'm going to use also in the earlier ones Ted did not provide the uh, the alignment pin hole. I drilled that hole to lift it out of the sand. So this is also one of the earlier versions. Then I made another video. That's why I'm going to show you two videos to Ted where I asked for some revisions. I wanted this a little bit longer. And you know I can get pretty fussy. One thing I asked for Ted, but I, I guess he was unable to do it or forgot about it or something. These uh, patterns do not have this scallop in here, which I think is a thing of beauty, but I guess it doesn't matter. It's just a friggin' paperweight. I don't know why that autofocus is going crazy on me, but one thing that uh, I don't know if Ted can't do it or it can't be done, but on any kind of foundry pattern, we don't want any sharp corners like this. 
And I did sand that just a little bit, but this material does not sand or file well at all. It just leaves a horrible, horrible burr that you can't seem to get off. But sharp corners are a problem in the sand mold. But this is one that I printed out at 55%, part one and part two. That took seven hours per part. Again, that's the hole to pull it from the pattern and in this version Ted did go ahead and put the alignment pins in. They're a little bit farther outboard than I probably would do but I guess the farther out the better register you will have. I will have. What do you mean you? So these are eighth inch pins and he's he made them quarter inch but the quarter inch would only be I think if it's 100 percent and 100 percent was quite huge this is in fact, well I'll measure it here, I've got to get my metric ruler out, it, because it's all in millimeters, all in millimeters. So I used eighth inch rod and that gives real good alignment of the two pieces. Again this is a split pattern. So at 55 percent, this is what a hundred and almost 120 millimeters. And the smaller ones I printed out at 45 percent. They took four and a half hours and that was the best finish I could get, the highest quality. And it, this is pretty hollow. I wanted to speed it up and it was four and a half hours. And this one is my final one at about 100 millimeters. This is not quite done. That's where I don't know what's with the autofocus here. I don't know how and don't bother to tell me but I don't know how to re, cause the printer to return to zero so it it stops right there and fuses itself on but I have a little bit more cleanup work to do on this. You see there's some spots, some of that will come right off. And then alignment pin holes, but this ends up as being a very odd size. So what I do is I will sacrifice some number drills, and I forgot what the number was, but I will cut these off because they are the right size for my alignment pins. Some of those little things will pop right off, even with a knife. This one I will have to file off. With file like this, trying not to change any of the geometry of the thing. And then I will sand just a little bit here on the edges. Like I say, the burr is horrendous. I, I do not like to work with this material. It's just nasty. Now most of this irregularity, not irregularity, but the, the layering and all that will show up in the final product. But you know I don't really care because this is just a demonstration piece. And in the mold I intend to do two of them together. Both a large one and a small one. Something like that with the sprue and the gates right in between the two, hopefully in a small flask. That was the other thing. In the high school I made these small so that perhaps the kids using a very, they were freshmen, very small flask that it was not too heavy for them and they could do maybe two at the same time because there were 24 kids in the class and really you could only get one or two molds made during a given hour and sometimes I couldn't even pour them that hour because uh, there were a lot of other things going on in the shop at the same time. So, But the kids seemed to enjoy this. They liked molding and uh, they liked being in the shop and having a finished product. But they had a lot of energy and wanted to do things. They didn't want to just stand around and watch a long demonstration like you are doing right now. Again, this is a foundry pattern. So there's three degrees taper in every direction so that it will withdraw. We call that draft. That's one of the hard things about 
making patterns, wooden patterns, or by hand. Now, one other thing to point out here is that there are, even though there would be three degrees right in here, we really do not, again, like those sharp corners, and that should be filled a little bit so there's a fillet. And that's what I was playing around with the, the wood putty here, is that I, I have a fillet there. Now, this is still a trial, so when I go out and make these, if it's a failure and doesn't withdraw right, I will come back in here and do some more handwork. But it's extremely tedious to do all of this and time-consuming because you have to wait for the filler to dry, then come back and sand it, look for spots you missed, and do it again. In here, too, it really needed a fillet. This one I had a lot of trouble with the printer. That's called Elephant Footing. And finally I mastered that. I don't know how, what I finally did, but I, I'm not too good at 3D printing and I no longer enjoy it. Matter of fact, I greatly dislike it. And that's why I'm not showing any of that because all of these blue patterns here represent oh, a week's work. And there's a lot more than this, too, that I'm not even going to show you because I'm ashamed. Well, the larger one is ready to mold. The smaller one still needs a little work. Not this one, but this one. Cleaning up and then the alignment pin. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back in 30 minutes. Don't go away. Well, I'm back and that only took 7 to 10 minutes, but I also wanted to tell you that these would not serve very well in a school foundry because sometimes when I had wooden patterns, the kids would actually, yeah, believe it or not, they would forget to take the pattern out of the sand mold. So we would go to pour the mold, and it only took a minute amount of metal because the aluminum came into the sprue, into the gate, and then hit the wooden pattern. And uh, then I knew that there was something wrong, or there was a blocked gate or something like that. There was just no predicting what kids would do, as you know, because you have children of your own. But anyway, that would ruin the wooden patterns. And then I had to remake them. So that's why I converted almost all wooden patterns into metal patterns, which I call durable working patterns. But of course, that's what they do in a big foundry for production. All of the match plates and so on are metal. And even at that rate, they erode away from the sand uh, over a period of time and have to be repaired or replaced. Well, this is done. Notice the extra hole drill there. Got the pins in place. And using drill bits is a very good source of odd shaped metal. And you say, oh, that's a dollar and a quarter you wasted. So what? Would you rather spend the time turning down a tedious little piece like this on the lathe or have a readily available one of the size? Plus, I have over 10,000 drill bits, so it just doesn't matter. So I now have two patterns ready to go, two different sizes. So in the next video, I will cast up a couple of these, so stay tuned for that. This is Mr. Pete, and I wanted to say before I close out, and I haven't said this in quite a while, if you know old men like me, disabled or with nothing to do, Tell them about YouTube. Tell them about my videos and other shop videos. And I have had feedback from some people saying that this has made a big difference to some of these old guys that have nothing to do. They finally got something they can watch besides game shows and other total nonsense. So again, this is Mr. Peach. So long for now. See you next time.